today we'll be talking about what is called as normal pressure hydrocephalus. Normal pressure hydrocephalus is a very common thing seen almost in 1 to 3 percent of the patients who are beyond 65 years of age. So this geriatric usually a problem is quite common and underreported. So I want to just elaborate and enumerate what are the symptoms and how do you identify what do you mean by normal pressure hydrocephalus. They call there is a triad called as a team's triad which says the patient or any individual with normal pressure hydrocephalus develops in inability to walk or imbalance while walking. That's the gait change. They have a broad based gait and they sway to walk each either side. Then they have memory disturbances or dementia and the third thing is urinary frequency increase or incontinence. Three of these or two or one of these symptoms are there. One may suspect that the person or patient might be having normal pressure hydrocephalus. Why it is called normal pressure hydrocephalus is the ventricles which harbor the cerebrospinal fluid in the brain, they balloon up. They are larger due to little slow drainage of the fluid or CSF from the brain to the spinal cord or around the brain. So this filtration system becomes slow and the fluid which normally has to drain out of the intracranial compartment becomes slow and static. That's why there is volume increase leading to pressure. Now once there is dilatation, the fibers surrounding these balloon of bag of CSF, what we call ventricles, inside the brain, the fibers which surround them get stretched. So these fibers mainly control the gait, urinary control, as well as the memory fibers. Now they are, once they are stressed, these three symptoms are seen, and the best way to diagnose such symptoms or such triad called normal pressure hydrocephalus triad is by an imaging called MRI of the brain. So once you do an MRI of the brain, you will see that abnormal dilatation of the ventricle, which is suspicious. And there is no other reason for imbalance or any other intracranial pathology. Once you do this, what we do as a diagnostic test called as a lumbar puncture. Now, lumbar puncture is draining the fluid from the back of the spine. So there we drain the fluid and we see therapeutic drainage 30 to 40 ml we drain. And once we drain that, immediately there is recovery, especially in the gait or memory or urinary problems. Once the LP confirms that there is improvement in these symptoms prior of normal plus, we plan procedure which is a minor neurosurgical operation called as ventriculoperitoneal shunt. In this surgery, we put a shunt from the brain. These ventricles are connected under the skin and we divert the CSF which is at high pressure to the abdomen leading to reduction in the volume of the CSF in the brain and the pressure goes down. The ballooning of the ventricles comes down and the patients have significant improvement. Now usually we use programmable shunt so that we can adjust the pressure tailor-made to that particular patient because the pressure may vary in individual and we can titrate the pressure after we do a shunt surgery and patients who are diagnosed correctly, the most important thing in this is diagnosis. Once you diagnose the patients correctly of normal pressure, what we do is a therapeutic lumbar puncture and an MRI corroborated with that. This confirms the diagnosis. That's then we offer a very rewarding procedure called as ventricular intervention. Trust me, as we see our patients who has given quote regarding the significant improvement after one week of post shunt surgery and then is back to normal to his life. So usually these elderly gentlemen, they want to be very, very uh, unique. They have, they, they don't want to be dependent on any of the family members because once you lose balance, they can become bedridden. They have urgency or urine problems and memory disturbance. These Triad is very, very important and a person can be debilitated, it can be a dependency on the family member, which can help, which can be helped by procedure by doing the ventriculoperitoneal shunt. 
this is what message I wish to give to the society that don't neglect symptoms of imbalance, memory disturbances, as well as urinary incontinence or urgency frequency in elderly patients, especially beyond 65 years of age, and make them independent of their family members and make them free to do routine activities, healthy and happy life beyond this procedure. Thank you.